I know that many of us are trying to run OER programs on a shoestring budget or no budget at all. So this fo video focuses on outreach and communication strategies that are free or low cost. It's the strategies that are important and Made to Stick is a great book by brothers Chip and Dan Heath. It talks about why some messages and ideas endure and others are quickly forgotten. They identified six traits of a sticky message. They use the acronym SUCCESS and advise making your communication simple, unexpected, concrete, credible, emotional, and centered on stories. With SIMPLE, the Heath's advice is to relentlessly prioritize. What's the one key takeaway you want your audience to remember? When I studied journalism as an undergrad, they trained us to write in inverted pyramid style with the most important information at the top. Newspaper articles would be typeset in a long strip and whatever didn't fit on the page got lopped off. Critical information had to be at the top. Busy administrators and faculty may not read past your email subject line or first sentence, so make those count. When it comes to being unexpected, use surprise to grab people's attention. The Heaths suggest engaging people's curiosity, like, did you know one third of students on this campus experience food insecurity? And then filling in their knowledge gaps. Also be concrete. Try to use analogies and metaphors and engage people's senses. For many people, OER is an abstract concept. So I keep print copies of OpenStax textbooks on hand so people can see them and touch them. Inevitably, they'll say, oh, it's a real textbook. For credibility, I've found that external authorities are extremely valuable. One of my department heads attended an OER ses session by Rajiv Jangiani at a national conference, and she was raving afterward to our dean that her mind was blown by the possibilities of OER. Now, she's heard me talk about OER for years, but the impact was much greater coming from an outside expert. Peer opinions also carry weight, so faculty value the views and experiences of other faculty. Leverage these things when planning webinars and workshops. For the emotional aspect, make people feel and care about something. This is where testimonials from students and faculty can be really effective. And also tell stories. When I explain why OER's perpetual access is so important, I like to tell the story of the community college student who had to return her rental textbook before her final exam. Students have really gut-wrenching stories to tell about the hardships of high textbook costs. And what kind of inspiring success stories can you tell? When it comes to messaging, I like to take two different approaches, the fire hose approach and the targeted approach. It's hard to know in advance which will be most effective, so experiment. With the fire hose approach, you blast out to as many people as possible. This can help uncover faculty and administrators you had no idea were interested in OER. With the targeted approach, I've sent personalized workshop invitations to instructors who teach the biggest classes, have the most ex expensive textbooks, teach subjects covered by OpenStax textbooks, have won teaching awards, or are known as campus movers and shakers. You can target new majors or degrees or courses that are being redesigned. Since we're in the middle of a pandemic and many people are feeling overwhelmed, I know I'm irritated by the dozens of COVID related sales pitches from vendors, I recommend being strategic. It's timely to spread the word about the benefits of OER for remote teaching and learning, but try to piggy pack with existing communication channels to avoid overloading email inboxes. This is where it pays to do some detective work on communication channels for your institution these will probably vary by audience. For faculty and administrators, is it Slack, listservs, all campus newsletters, learning communities? For students, is it the campus newspaper, student government, or social media? Partnering with other campus units and using recognized channels can have the added benefit of name recognition and greater credibility. Need some ideas for messaging to push out? 
Lumen Learning's OER Champion Playbook offers valuable resources on making the case for OER, measuring impact, building awareness and enthusiasm, supporting faculty through change, and sustaining change and impact. Remember how credibility was one of the Heath brothers' elements for making a message stick? Statistics are one way to do this. But rather than presenting raw numbers, try using infographics that make it easier for people to digest the data. By the Numbers is from Kwantlen Polytechnic University's Open Education Strategic Plan for 2018 to 23. It's colorful, uses icons with concrete images to make them sticky, and is far more visually appealing than a bulleted list of numbers and facts. This list on the right of free infographic tools comes from a buffer blog post. There are 12 tools on the list, but I've chosen four that are supposed to be easy to use. They're freemium products, so the basic version is free, or you can pay for additional features. Canva provides lots of different templates that you can customize. With Visme, you can drag and drop graphics and text to create infographics, animations, banners and more. Snappa offers templates for infographics and social media content and Biteable lets you create high quality video infographics. In presentations to campus, I frequently show the Florida virtual campus survey results about the negative impacts of high textbook costs on students, but it's even more powerful to feature your own institution's numbers. This OER research toolkit from the Open Ed Group is a great resource for designing your own surveys. But go beyond data too. I like how OpenStax's Our Impact page features more than numbers below its statistics. This section features the stories of two college students and a professor. Getting students involved in advocacy is a great strategy because they fulfill at least three traits of a sticky message. They can provide credible, emotional stories. BC Campus offers the OER Student Toolkit, an advocacy guide for student leaders. One of the most useful sections is step three, how to advocate on your campus. And here's some advice from that section. Feature students and panels in event planning. Teach students how to use Creative Commons licenses and to publish open access. Encourage students to mention textbook costs in course evaluations and faculty reviews. They can praise the use of zero cost course materials. They can call out $400 textbooks. The Open Textbook Alliance offers a really great organizing toolkit for student government leaders. These are some of the tips, which are good advice for our own campaigns too. Figure out your campaign slogan. Keep it clear, simple, simple and memorable, just like the Heaths advise. Your message should motivate people to action. Don't be afraid to go big. And carry out every visibility tactic that you can imagine. So fire hose approach. Some of their suggested approaches would cost money, like posters, ads, banners, or table tents. But others, like social media po posts, just take time. The Open Textbook Alliance even offers sample tweets and Facebook posts. This tweet from the Daily Tar Heel, Pearson's all-in digital access program is a mistake, features a letter to the editor from a student warning faculty about the drawbacks of inclusive access. Humor and poignancy work really well in social media posts. I grabbed this screen image on the right from Facebook a few years ago. Within the first 20 hours of being posted, it got 15,000 likes and more than 2,000 shares. Look at that sad face. Affordable Learning Louisiana embeds tweets on its OER page. So incur experiment with different approaches and see what sticks.